I'm Robert P. Fitton, and this is a discussion of the book Double Deception. When I was a boy, my mother and father told me the story of Pearl Harbor. Sadness still resided in my mother's eyes as she recounted the sneak attack on our boys at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, on December 7, 1941. But there was anger, too. Anger that the two Japanese envoys who were in Washington, D.C., were ostensibly suing for a negotiated settlement while the Japanese fleet was heading toward the United States base at Pearl Harbor. Almost 3,000 soldiers were killed horribly as the battleship row vessels were easy targets for the Japanese Zeros and high-flying bombers, all equipped with specific torpedoes to destroy the fleet. A man who lived near us was at Pearl. I saw his wound incurred on that fateful day. In fact, my mother had a dream just before the attack that this young man was calling out for her. I knew all this growing up, but I didn't know the geopolitical situation, nor did I understand the high cabal in various countries and how it exists in a separate realm from the rest of us. Decisions are made at a higher, more ethereal level, and the consequences and reasoning for those decisions is confounding at best and sometimes horrendous at worst. So I posit to you the crux of the matter. Did FDR know the Japanese were going to attack Pearl? I believe that no matter what the high cabal had in mind with this situation, we the people need to know how, why, and what they did. After all, it is our country. But I put a caveat in the Pearl Harbor attack, not because I'm taking the high moral ground, but because the high moral ground is the only conclusion for the abomination. The title, Double Deception, would indicate something else is hidden. This component of the book is the USO letters that Senior Chief Petty Officer Mike Madigan receives from stateside from a woman who signs the letter J. Jay was a real person, someone whose attributes I admire. Many of her actual words are inserted into the letters and stitched together with the words that echo her beliefs. The question with every letter is this, have you done something good for somebody today? Jay never said that, but the sentiment encapsulates so many things she did in her life. And finally, Mike Madigan is a part of a clandestine group finding answers about Japanese intentions. He and Midge are on a wild and dangerous adventure to spread the truth about the attack. This book is end-noted where necessary, and the real history is deftly inserted into the plot. I hope in the end that you will come to have the same feeling about this event that I have. I'm Robert P. Fitton, and this has been a discussion of double deception.